Hi, for this video what I want to do is I want to show you how to use a tree diagram to help you find probability. A tree diagram is just a visual display of all of your possible outcomes so that you can visually see what you are looking for. Um, so what we have here is a probability experiment involves slipping a coin. So with our coin we can end up with either heads or tails and I'm just going to use H and T for heads and tails. And then we're also going to spin this spinner and we're going to record our results. Um, it is equally likely to land on each of the, um, the pieces in this spinner. So these are all equal pieces. Um, and you can land on any number one through eight. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing out our tree diagram of what's possible. So on our coin, we can get a heads or we can get a tail. So this is our options for our coin. Okay, from our spinner, I could get a head with a 1, a head with a 2, a 3, a 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. Okay, for our tails, we can do the same thing. I can get a tail with a 1, a tail with a 2, a tail with a 3, tail with 4, tail with 5, tail with six, seven, or eight. So a tree diagram is only practical for small um, scenarios. If you have a lot of different situations, like if you were gonna repeat this like four times, it would not be practical to draw this out because every time you repeat it, you do have to add on to it um, with your tree diagram. So then we can see that our possible outcomes that we can get is a head with one, a head with a two, a head with a three, Okay. Or we could have got a tail. Okay. So this is known as our sample space. Those are all the possible out outcomes that we can have every single time that we repeat this experiment. So there's 16 total outcomes since we had two for this one and eight for this one. We could have just multiplied that together and said that we have two times eight, which is 16. So that's how many total uh, values we have in our sample space. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look for the probability of each of these events. So the probability of event A, I can either write out the word form, or since it's denoted up here, I can just say A, is equal to tossing a head and spinning an even number. That means that both have to be true. So anytime you see and, both have to be true. Okay, so what we would do is we would go through our heads and we would see how many times did we get an even number. So I got a head with a two, four, six, or an eight. Okay, so that happened four times out of, remember we had 16 possible scenarios. So you can leave it as four out of 16. It is okay to not reduce probabilities. Um, that way you know how many were in your sample space. This does reduce down to one fourth, or you could write it as a decimal, or you could write it as a percent. All four of these mean the exact same thing. So it is, um, you are able to write all these down. A lot of times in homework platforms, they are very specific about how to write your answer. So just make sure that you read carefully. Um, I know the textbook that I work from, with right now, for most of the answers, they're gonna want it in decimal form. Occasionally, they'll ask you to leave it as a fraction or convert it to a percent, but most of the time in the textbook that I currently teach from, that would be the option. All right, so probability of B. So event B is tossing a tail or spinning a number less than five. Or means that only one has to be true. Both can be true. Okay, um, so that means that if I got a tail or if I had any number that was less than five, then my conditions would be met. So with or, it's one or the other. So if you notice, with our tails, all of these would be included. So all eight of these tails would be included in this situation. So we know that we have to include all eight of these. 
Okay, and then we would come over here and look for our heads that are less than five. Less than does not include, so we would only have these four numbers here. So I have a total of four plus eight more, and so that would tell me that I have 12 out of 16, which gives me 0.75 or 75%. And I did not reduce it. You could also reduce this to three over four. Again, all of these are acceptable. Most likely, um, if you're one of my students right now, you would have your answer left as a decimal. So if you want to pause the video and try the next one on your own, feel free to do that. Um, and then once you have tried it, then come back to check to see if you got the answer correct. All right, so I paused the video for our paused recording for a second and wrote down the sample space again because it was getting confusing using the same one so I didn't want to try to put a third one on there but I didn't want to make you watch me write all of it out again. So for this last one we're looking for the probability of a head or at least a six. So with this one you can write it as the probability of C or you could also write it as the probability of head or at least six. This is another acceptable practice. It just depends on the textbook that you're working from. I prefer this method because that way I don't have just an arbitrary variable that's sitting there. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so for this one, what we would do is we know that all of these contain a head. So any one of these would be an acceptable outcome. That would be something that would match our criteria because every single one of them have a head. Um, some of them meet both. At least a six would mean six, seven, and eight. So head six, head seven, head eight. Those would all um, be included in both of them. We just don't count them twice. So I have a total of eight here. And then what I would go to is my tails and I would figure out which ones are at least six. So six would be the smallest valuable value that would be acceptable. So I would have eight plus three more, which would give me a total of 11 out of 16. This one cannot be reduced. So if I wanted to leave it as a fraction, I would leave it like this. Um, if I want to plug it into my calculator, this does end up being 0.6875 or 68.75%. Okay. Um, so hopefully this helped you. There are a lot of different scenarios where you could use a tree diagram to help you see all the possible outcomes, especially if you have like three situations going on. Sometimes that will um, make it easier to visually see, okay, what are my possible outcomes? As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me, need me to cover, please let me know that too.